Hey everyone, Todd from Sideshow FX once again, and in this video, I'm going to give you a whole orientation of our Cakewalk MIDI controller for Stream Deck Devices package. Now I assume that you've gone through the PDF that was included in the download and followed the instructions on the installation there, or you've watched our installation video, and uh, if you have not, I have the link uh, in the description below. So if you've gone through the installation process and you're all set up and running, this is the first page that you'll be presented with. Now let's open our copy of Cakewalk here, simple project we got here. Now on our main page, we'll start with this row of keys here. Now what these are, these are our track selection buttons. And they'll allow us to select any track, and you can see it's reflecting the selection in the Cakewalk interface itself. Also, you'll notice that the name of the track is also displayed there. So what this allows us to do is access different parts of the track individually. So we can solo the track, mute the track, and arm the track. Now while you have a track selected, this fader will control the volume for the currently selected track. So moving the fader up and down by pressing the up and down key returns the same result in the application, including the digital readout. Now the fader beside it is our master, and clicking it, of course, will move our master fader up and down. So that's all well and good for tracks one to eight. Well, my project currently has 14 tracks. How do I access tracks nine to 14? Well, that's where the bank button's coming up here. So hitting bank once will now send the focus from shaker all the way to our last track, which is clap and pressing the bank button back takes us back with tracks one to eight. And the track buttons here will of course select the, the next or the previous track. Now one thing I'd like to point out that if you find the faders are moving either too quickly or too slowly for you, it's easily adjustable. So let's hop over to Stream Deck software itself and let's say we want to make the, the selected track fader move a little quicker. Click on it and uh, either the top or the bottom. You'll see this dialog box and we have a slider here. And so we can just easily move this up faster. Do the same thing with the top key because this moves the fader down, this moves the fader up. And so you, you kind of want them to be the same. Go back to Cakewalk. Now when we press the fader, you can see it moves considerably faster now. And you can do that for any of the faders that are available in our profile. Now rounding out the rest of the keys that are on this page, we have our usual transport controls here. Reverse, fast forward, we can invoke record, and we can loop. These keys here, we can add an audio track, we can add an instrument track, and we can present the console view. This key here displays our beats and bars. Turn on metronome. Now this key here opens up our Mixler console page. By selecting that, we now have individual faders available to us on a per track basis. So we can see we have each individual track represented by each of the tracks in our project and we can adjust the faders for each one of them. Just like so. In addition, we have the solos available for each of the tracks as well. Now this key here opens up a new page. This is our solo mute arm page. And just like the fader keys, these are dedicated with tracks one to eight currently. And so we can select individual parameters for each of the tracks, and it reflects in our application. Going back, we can go into our pan page, and this presents our pan pots for each of the individual eight tracks. The top button moves the pan to the right, bottom button moves the pan to the left. Now if we switch back over to our volume faders, 
and select our flip fader pan button, we now can control pan with the fader keys. Deactivate that by pressing it twice. And now we can control the volume as usual. It just saves you a step from having to hop into and out of pan back and forth. You can do volume adjustment, quickly click this, do a pan adjustment, hit it twice, back to volume, and do a volume adjustment again. Now over to our plugin page. This allows us control over the compressor and EQ that we have on a currently selected track. Right now I have the drums selected, and let me just go over and solo the drums. Go back into plugin, I can press play. Now if I open up my sidebar here, I can see I've got my compressor and my EQ here. So let's start with compressor. We'll select compressor on the stream deck so we can control the input, the input, the attack, the release, and the output with the first four keys. The next key over will switch our ratio. We have control, control over dry wet here. The type of compressor that we want to use and if the compressor is on or off. There it's off, there it's on. So that's control over the compressor plugin. If we switch this to EQ now, you see with our EQ open on the interface, we have access to all of the dials in the EQ. So we can adjust the low frequency, up and down, going once again to the left, to the right with our top key, and to the left with the bottom key. We have the low mid frequencies, high mid, and our high frequency. The buttons below can also be adjusted here. Press the EQ one more time, and then we switch over to our volume faders. Now we have control over the rest of the EQ functions using the volume faders. Like so. Go back to plug-in, we can hit EQ once again, go back and we can restore our volume faders now. We have a send key here, so if I go to the interface here and I'll pop open my properties so I can see my sends, I have a send currently on this track. Hitting send twice gives me control over the parameters of the send bus. So this will turn the send on and off, this will adjust the level of the send, this adjusts the panning of the send, and enables or disables the post. Now moving from send to our track bus, this gives us control over most of the parameters in our entire currently selected track. This pot will move the fader, our pan, change the output, change our input, adjust our phasing, change our stereo mono, turn the monitor on and off, and turn the bus on and off. So all those parameters are available on the track bus page. So that's it, I encourage you to explore on your own, work with it with your, with your projects. You'll quickly get to the point where you can find yourself adjusting parameters quicker than just using the interface alone. You can refer to our documentation, we detail what keys control which parameters. Now one additional troubleshooting note you might encounter is that occasionally you might find that the Stream Deck uh, stops being responsive. Uh, the MIDI controls aren't working anymore and you get error messages like this uh, showing that the graphics are offline. Now this is a known problem with how Stream Deck uses MIDI and it hasn't been fixed yet. But there is uh, a, a very simple workaround to avoid this happening, and that is you should always try and have your Stream Deck directly connected to your computer. So don't use a USB hub. Go straight from the Stream Deck into the computer, and that tends to make a much more stable MIDI connection. So if you have to go through a USB hub, you probably are going to find that this will occasionally go offline on you.
So the fix to get everything back online is very simple. You just go back to uh, Stream Deck software, go back into the store, and uh, into plugins, search for the MIDI again, click uninstall, wait for it to do the uninstall process, and then immediately install it again. Now you may find you'll have to restart Stream Deck. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So when you go back to your application, you'll find that things will work as they did before. But once again, the best approach is to make a direct connection from the Stream Deck to the computer and avoid using a USB hub for its connection. And as always, if you have any difficulty, go to our website, check out our support page, open up a chat window, or send us a note. We're always here to help. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it helps out in your workflow and makes you more productive and hopefully produce even better material. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon.